warned uh, the the British that they weren't going to be taking away our arms uh, by ringing those bells and, and um, making sure as he's riding his horse through town to send those warning shots and bells that uh, we were going to be secure and we were going to be free. I'm Nevin Warner. And I'm Brandon Warner. And this is Laughing Historically, episode number eight. So listen, my children, and you shall hear of the real midnight ride of Paul Revere. Um, happy Fourth of July, as you can tell, a little difference in scenery today. Yes, out in the backyard. <laughs> what a better topic, though, to talk about than about this midnight ride to help start our country, right? Yes, this is the like key, like started off our independence. And you learn it's all fake. A lot of it's all wrong. Yeah. His nickname, Paul Revere, was the messenger of the revolution because mm -hmm. of his midnight ride. He was a silversmith. You call them the money bags of the revolution because <laughs> he had a lot of money as a silversmith. He had yeah. some good money. And once in a while on Antiques Roadshow, you'll see they'll bring in a, a Paul Revere silver yeah. thing. And <laughs> it's very often, it's not, it's a fake. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, they're very wary of Paul Revere silver things. <laughs> He's also famous for that Boston Massacre drawing. You know that? Like the drawing yeah. of, the, of the little... He drew that? Yeah, he's the guy who drew that. <laughs> so he's, he's a big fabricator, this guy. And of course, his midnight ride, which he started in... Uh, he started all went all the way to Concord and Lexington mm -hmm. to warn Adams and Hancock about the British troops marching on to take their missions and to arrest Adams and Hancock for being um, rebel rebels. Yeah, yeah. Traitors. The funny thing is they ever mentioned the two other guys. There's two other people who yeah. rode with him. Um, there were William Dawes and Dr. Sam Prescott. Uh -huh. Okay, um, and they took the longer ways. <laughs> and the thing is, is that. Revere, no one liked using him as a rider, because uh -huh. his job was to always go from Pennsylvania to Boston to deliver messages, okay? Uh -huh. No one liked, because he was too outlandish, and he was too mm -hmm. popular, uh -huh. and, and he, he always would just be ritzy about everything. The other two guys were sent just in case, because they know, oh, Revere messes up, at least we got two others, you know? <laughs> so you got the popular artist guy. Yeah. Who's up front doing it, and yeah. the other guy's doing the actual work. Yeah, exactly. It's that how it is usually, uh -huh. right? The actual ride was supposed to be a stealthy, yes. um, like, they used to use that ride for, in the Indian Wars. Yes. The, to warn people about what was going on, but yes. the British weren't ever supposed to know what was going on. No. It was supposed to be a completely silent run. It was a quiet operation. He wasn't shooting guns and ringing bells. No. It was a quiet, yeah. quiet and, operation. And how they, war how they started the whole uh, ride was by lighting the actual bell tower, the ring of the bell tower and the lights, uh -huh. that actually did happen. Yeah. But the whole British is coming didn't happen. The British is coming, that never happened, okay? Yeah. They, they wouldn't have said the British are coming because they thought of themselves as British. They would say, they probably said the red coats or the regulars. The regulars, yeah, the are, regulars coming. are coming. Yeah. yeah. He meets up with Dawes and with uh, Prescott, mm -hmm. okay? Um, he finally makes it to the scene, he talks to Adams and he talks to Hancock. And he says, this is what's happening. And then they say, well, we need to go to Concord because that's where our militia is. And that's where all the munitions are, all the arms. Yeah. So on the way from Lexington, they get captured. Now, the other two are smart enough to deceive the British, jump a fence on their horses, and run away. <laughs> now, Revere, he just gets captured. He just doesn't care. <laughs> he, he wants to get captured because when he gets captured, he starts bad-mouthing the British and insulting them. Yeah, and then he's like, oh, don't you dare go to Lexington because we're just going to kick your butt. Yeah, that's what he's saying, pretty much. And, and then, like, and now in the background, you hear them, the uh, the militias practicing and drilling and stuff. He's yeah. like, oh, they're going to get you, like that type of idea. And he's, just, he's telling them everything, like, oh, we're going to get you. <laughs> oh, you're going to bring that mark to Concord. You better not go there. <laughs> Two hours later, Dawes and Prescott have already escaped, and they're yeah. making their way to Concord to tell the troops. Uh-huh. Once they start hearing the drills, the British soldiers, they uh -huh. release Paul Revere because they're afraid of the, the militia starting an engagement with them over mm -hmm. capturing Paul Revere, right? Revere <laughs> goes to a bar. <laughs> For an hour, for like an hour, uh -huh. and it's to get Hancock's chest, which apparently has some papers in it. But how long does it take you to get a chest at to a bar? Pick up a chest. No, he got a couple rounds. Yeah, he was like, yeah, hey, rounds at everyone. 
The British are coming, Browns and everyone. <laughs> Gets the chest, he leaves, he hears the shots being fired at like skin, and he stumbles upon the battle. <laughs> he didn't even know, he didn't even know what was going on. He, wait, it's like, you know, we get out of bar at like 5 a.m. You're like, oh, yeah. a rough day. Like, like, oh my God, what's going on? That's what it was. So Dawes and Prescott are the ones who actually told the troops about the British marching to right. Concord. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't exist as Americans. No. The best part is that later on in the Revolutionary War, mm -hmm. Paul Revere is in the biggest naval massacre yeah. in American history until Pearl Harbor. Yeah, that was the, it. The uh, Pepsiscot Bay Massacre. Yeah. And he's one of the people who completely messed up the whole battle. And what happened there <laughs> was they were going to attack the British in the Maine and they completely messed it up. Hardy of the Massachusetts Navy was gone. decimated. Yeah, it was gone, yeah. And it was completely like off of... All warships. Completely off of Paul Revere's... Uh, <laughs> his, inc his, his, his incompetence. His incompetence. <laughs> Paul Revere gets an honorable discharge for, and he eventually gets it revoked. And then later after the war, what does he do? He becomes a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> How did the poem come about. It had a good rhyme to it. Longfellow picked Paul Revere. It had a good rhyme to it and <laughs> because he was popular. Like, think yeah. about it. You want, if you want someone to catch on, you pick like a Justin Bieber, right? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. pick someone who has popularity to them to add to that poem. <laughs> the Midnight Ride of what? Justin Bieber. Dawes and Prescott, they'd be like, who the hell is he? They don't yeah. care about him. They care about Paul Revere, who yeah. later became a dentist. <laughs> Happy Fourth of July. <laughs> Happy Fourth of July. <laughs>